Okay, here I am. Hello. Oh, I have to adjust everything. It's been so long since I've streamed. Not really. It's cool. Alright. <laughs> really this chaos. Okay. I have coffee. Yay. Hmm. I have coffee. I have work to do. Uh, hello, if you are joining now. Um, I am Chris, and I am working on Git Store, this lovely, this lovely app here. Um, I've been working on it for a few months, this version of it. Uh, and today, I have the exciting task of taking everything that's currently being saved only in the session and persisting it to a standalone page. So that's cool. Uh, just had a cool meeting with Sean and Jason about this stuff. Everyone's generally excited. excited. And I've also had like a couple days of like doing support for V1 and realizing how cool V2's UI is compared to V1's UI. So, if you will permit me, while listening to Hearthstone ODST, maybe I'll make it a bit softer. If you'll permit me while listening to Hearthstone's ODST to do some really nerdy database work and tie it into the UI, then uh, I would like to do that now. Cool. Um, so, okay, let's look at the things that we need to save to create this page. We need to create a page based on a certain type, like sell your app. We need to create that page taking into account all of the plans that have been configured as well as all the GitHub, Bitbucket, and upload attachments to it, and the patch of potential variables that can be changed on it. We need to create checkout buttons with either Stripe or PayPal, and if it's Stripe, have a CC form on that page. If it's PayPal, it can just be a buy now button, like the same as V1. And then we need to also pick a default set of theme variables for this. And these theme variables need to be adjustable after the fact. Um, and we need to also allow for patching this data and this data up here. What else? Hmm. I think that's all for now. I think that's all for now. In future, I want to be able to customize the URL uh, and then for like the pro version, have a custom domain. But for now, we're sticking with a very boring design, but to try and get it functional so people can try this out um, for their own projects. That's the goal. So, um, okay, we need to have like a page table, I guess. Let's say artisan make migration pa uh, pages table. I don't think I have that variable in here yet, do I? No. Okay, so pages. Pages is the container for all of this mess. Uh, like the root element for it. Um, then we need a plans table and then plans attached to a page. Make plans table. And then we need a uh, repositories table. So we have the elevated GitHub token. Um, Bitbucket's tokens expire very quickly though, so I wonder if we are going to have to do like a reauth at checkout. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. For now though, let's make a repositories table and an uploads table. Wow, that takes quite a while. Uploads, um, plans contain all that plan patch data, P 
pages can contain the variables and the text copy and the link URLs and the page slug. Uh, I think that's it. I want to do the payment stuff, the um, like the the checkout stuff and the subscriptions and charges things. Uh, I want to do that separately because I think that's like a whole bunch of complication on its own. Uh, okay. Cool. So we've got some database tables. Some database tables happening. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay. Firstly, we need to link this to a user. Um, Laravel. How low am I sunk down in my chair? Difficult to tell. Maybe that's why my screen was pointed so down. I kind of feel more comfortable like this. I'm going to stay like this. Um, okay. Uh, eloquent, no, database, migrations. Um, I need to check what this migration code was for the version of Laravel that I started this app as, which is 6.2. 6x uh, and then creating columns because I want to see what the if the foreign key column is on here was there a foreign column on here no oh sucks that must have come in seven then okay unsigned big integer that is what this one's, this one is a big increments. Hey, eat star 55. Thanks for the follow. And signed big int. It's probably this column I need, right? It's a separate line. What is this? Yeah, I don't want to create an actual foreign key column anymore, but I, there was, so in Laravel 7, it's probably worth um, checking this out in case you didn't know about it. You probably know about it, Sam, but in case anyone else checks this later. Um, the uh, big increments changes to this, or is alias to ID, and then there's also a foreign... Um, where is that thing now? Foreign ID which is unsigned big integer. So I could have actually gone here, which would have told me these things. But yeah, ID and foreign ID make it a lot easier to remember what those field types were and to keep them the same. But anyway, I, you know, I'll just use what's available in 6.0, 6.2. I don't know if it adds a key. I think you still have to, if you want to connect them, I think you still have to um, create that connection. I don't think this by default does it, it just makes a column that is unsigned big int. But it keeps those things aligned, like you don't have to keep these aligned. It does that based on the default of the system. So this will be user ID. Wow, that was that was a ramble. <laughs> a big old ramble. But um, yeah, I have to link the page to the user that's creating it. Um, what else do I need to do? Uh, let's see, table string st strong string title <laughs> it's still strong string title text description um, and this can actually be marked down oh yeah cool so this field is title this field is description which will support markdown um, let's do like meta line one uh, left meta line one I don't know no name want to do here you see I don't know that this works well for like startups or agencies I think this only really works from like a user point of view so what do we do here suggestions from chat what do you think we should do here the the idea behind this was like okay show who is selling this stuff and this is okay for like I don't know someone on github or bitbucket like a freelancey sort of person or an internet person 
but does it work with companies or people who want to have a whole like logo thing here maybe oh my net just went down is it gonna stay down throughputs picking up wow little little bit of a network blip there sorry about that um, I don't know if this should stay this this individual or if I should just have like a markdown block maybe maybe like a little HTML block people can put their own crap in here if they want so like a markdown block for here a mark a markup block for here a markup block for here anything I worry about then is like having to filter out things like script tags and script injection on images and all that kind of garbage. That whole category of nonsense. <sighs> okay, maybe we do a logo uploader. Yeah. I reckon keep it simple. Maybe we do like a logo uploader and just like a name field that can link to something. Yeah, title, sub, and then maybe just leave this section out here. Don't really need this. Simple at first. I like that. I like that. Okay. String lo logo name. What did I call that other field? Never mind. Different project. <laughs> logo name. Um, meta title or no header subtitle header title header. Logo name. So this is file name. Okay, fine. That's cool. And then I can default those to like placeholders or just show like a blank if if those aren't um, sorted out. So we've got our title, our description. Let's change these to body title and body content. Body. Uh, yeah, whatever. That's fine. So body title, body content, this stuff's all dynamic, um, and this we'll just do away with. Let me actually do away with that in the preview pane before I forget and then wonder where that is later. So that is in uh, show pre oh, preview theme, preview theme, and that is over here on the right, right, right. <laughs> That's over there on the right, right, right. Okay, which means I can probably take all of this stuff and put it in here because I don't need that division anymore. So this should still function. No, it doesn't because I've got space between, haven't I? Justify between. <laughs> Here we go. Cool. All right. Um, cool. I want to go back to the default theme. I don't like this. Charlie Mint theme. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I really like the default theme either, but I prefer those colors to Charlie Mint. Apparently, Sean has worked up all sorts of cool combinations for that stuff, so I'm keen to see. I'm keen to see that mess. For now, I think this is okay for the dynamic content of the pages. But now I need to take this and um, start working on plans. So this will be page ID. Table string title uh, description, which will probably allow a markdown. Um, what are the plan fields that we have in the workflows? Workflow cell app. Cool. So this is all the mess that we have. Um, that's all the mess we have to store. So title description amount, um, which I'll just have as integer, so no fractional amounts. <laughs> currency, we'll just do as a string because that's going to be the currency code. Interval, again, 
Well, maybe we do this as an enum, actually. Enum. Enum. It's still going to be a string, but it'll be a more controlled string. So enum interval month year once is the intervals we work with. Okay, there's probably some other fields in here like is it maintained and supported. Um, I'll I'll put those in now though. I'll put those in now because I know they're going to come in uh, in a little while. So is maintained is supported. Default these two false. That makes it's like a sensible default there. Um, in fact, actually no. Let's make this stuff nullable. Default to false actually makes more sense. I want stuff that can be nullable to be nullable though, because what's bitten me lately with Laravel projects is the fields not being nullable by default. Um, so, let me make them nullable. Ooh, title is repeated there. Probably not going to be null, but, you know, I prefer to, um, I prefer to not just have to deal with database issues, database issues with this right now. Okay, plans, um, repositories is repositories also linked to a page. This is such a different database structure from get still v1. It's unbelievably different. Okay, table, um, string name, enum for source. So is it um, is it GitHub? Is it Bitbucket? What else? Name, source, um, You see, we have a lot of stuff in, in V1 for this, but I want to keep it as light as possible to start off with. What do we need to know? We need to know the name of the repo so that we can add deploy keys and webhooks. And someone will download based on that. So if we know the name and the source, we can tell, we can make the URL for either of those for them to download and we can tell where to add the deploy keys and that those deploy those um, API keys are saved on the user profile so we don't need to know that. I think just name and source is sufficient for now. Um, again we don't filter by branch because deploy keys don't give us that option. And then finally uploads, very similar. Um, here we actually have some guidance for what to save here because in our show uploads we have, oh it's not there, it's actually in include scripts. We have some fields that we are expecting to be able to have already. So the file name, the type and the size. Those are useful things. Um, string name. Oh, let's actually give a title as separate to this. So title is like the, the pretty name. And the name is the system UUID path name. String type. Um, I'll leave that as string for now because I don't want to enum all of the possible options because I don't know what the possible options are. Like if someone's selling a font file, font, any font type. If someone's selling a PSD or like a graphics file, anything there, you know, they could be selling JavaScript by download. So we don't really know what that is. But then size we can do as um, unsigned integer, unsigned integer, unsigned, unsigned integer. Cool. So that'll give us the size. We can actually do unsigned integer for plans amount as well, because that's never going to be negative, right? That makes sense. 
Okay, so this gives us uploads. Let's mash this in here. Artisan migrate. Will that work? Who knows? Let's see. Cool. Okay. So we store the file that is uploaded. We store its UUID, but we don't store the upload anywhere. And we should probably do that. Here, where we have this to do save to S3, where are we saving to? Well, we're not saving anything to the local file system. I don't even know if we're using the file system um, on here. But I have other projects that store file uploads. So let me go to one quickly. Nope. <laughs> GitHub. Oh, come on. GitHub. Ooh, this is ominous Hearthstone music. I wonder. Let me check something quick. Oh, that's so kind. Okay, um, where did I save this stuff? Was it in this thing? I think it was in here. Um, yeah, so S3 comp, I think DO is actually going to be the best place to do this. Um, we do have. That's interesting. We do have Vulture hosting. Let me log in here quickly and see, because maybe there's like a DO, maybe this is also DO compatible or S3 compatible like DO is. Objects. Do you offer S3 compatible? Yes, it's S3 compatible. Cool. New object storage then. Ah. So we host on Vulture. Um, why can we only do in New Jersey? Do they have CDN support? Block storage provides disk volume can be mounted. That makes sense. But then do they have a CDN? Maybe I need to create one to see. Um, uploads. Five dollars a month. Hmm. Hmm. So I want to just see um, what CDN is available here, because if they don't have a CDN, I don't want to host everything in New Jersey. Um, I may go to Digital Ocean Spaces if there's no nice CDN for this. But it's worth a check. I've never done object storage with Vulture, so... Vulture is very similar to Digital Ocean. I, I, don't, I haven't used it all that much, but from the functionality that we do use for Git Store, it seems pretty much the same. So, we'll see. We shall see. How's everyone doing? Sam, how are you doing? We haven't chatted outside stream chat in a while. <sighs> okay, so we need to set this up. If it's S3 compatible, I can probably follow a similar approach to what I did here in terms of config. Dum, 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 dum. Where did it go? Did I do it here? I did it there. What do you give me? Okay. B buckets. Good. <laughs> it's good. I'm glad you're doing well. Where do I see the um Where 
do I see the CDN stuff? Do I have to upload something? Browse based upload. Oh. Oh. Okay. Tell you what. Bye. Bye, Felicia. I am going to use DigitalOcean for this just because I'm um, more familiar with its offering. Fortunately, it's the kind of system that can easily switch over, since apparently Vulture is S3 compatible. I'm not a robot, Digital Ocean, but yet you are going to use me to train your robots. Sis. I'll be with you in just a minute. Sorry that I'm entering stuff in on another screen. Just gotta do some 2FA and then I'll be good to go. Oof, hear that feedback. It's because I'm touching something that's not grounded properly. Um, which icon is it again? That one. Oh. Digital Ocean having an outage because they told me there was an error. Oh, come on! <laughs> come on now. There we go. Okay. Spaces. So I'll set up a new space. Um, for this obviously and then I know the config I can use almost directly from this app which I'm already using spaces because I went through this issue before create spaces you see here I can set the um, upload destination as well as use an S3 uh, uh, a CDN um, yeah totally. Dotes. Um, I will restrict file listing. Cool. So Amsterdam means folks in South Africa where I am and folks all over Europe um, have relatively faster than hosting it somewhere here. So my upload, in fact anyone's upload to this is going to be, no the servers upload to here and the server is in Amsterdam the servers upload to here will be quicker um, and direct uploads if I have like a different client or if I need to migrate you know whatever do I I, I mean I do want is this optional yeah I think it's fine Let's try this okay okay Let's get the config. Uh, services. There's some. Is it there or is it file systems? I forget. There we go. S3. Nope. Is this just doing it locally? Where is the app that I had that was uploading? Where's the app that I was uploading directly to S3? I think that's in here. I think it's just... Yeah. <laughs> cool. So slightly older, but I think this was the one that was uploading directly to S3. Um, so I won't mess with that, but then I think in file system there's some... Um, let me try and remember where this is. I mean, strictly speaking, it should just be this. And actually, this config should already exist here. 
yeah, it does exist here, but then what am I doing for... Let me just uh, drag this over here, because I need to do a cat quick. Um, Yeah, it's not that. Um, that one? No. Where was I doing this? It's not that. Articles admin? No, that's December 31st. Um, audio admin, January 4th. When was like a recent thing that I was working on here? Maybe it wasn't in this set of projects. I was trying to find config for this. I'm so sorry. I should have organized this config before. Um, Assert Chris IO does this. My blog does this. There we go. Cool. So I need to put some, uh, excuse me a second, I need to put some env variables in here. Do -do, do -do, do -do. Um, and let me copy them over to example. I'll show you what they are in just a minute. that is that I need to um, save these keys so it's this one right yes ah interesting endpoint yes I've got that endpoint CDN, file listing, how do I set the keys for this? Account, security, manage spaces. Where do I set the API credentials? Do I need to do a new... Uh, generate new key. Found it! It's, you set it in a totally different place. Um, which is pretty weird. But there we go. I found it. I'll show you this in just a second. bucket there is git store uploads okay I can close that and here's th this here's this again um, okay so let me come back here um, I also need to oh you know what I didn't do <laughs> let's check out the config for this quickly config Cat services, mailgun, no, cat file system, oh, fi fi file systems, spaces, there we go, okay, so I have some, um, some new config for file systems, I won't use the S3 one, because you have to do some uh, slight variations in configuration, so you still use the same driver, but, um, What's different here? You have to put an endpoint in, and you have to put a version in. Um, from from what I can tell from the previous investigation that I did, and then, hold on, let me get this back in here so I can see chat again because maybe people are screaming at me in chat. 
Um, dropped some more frames. Sorry about that. So there's a couple extra points of config in here, and so I actually just put them out into different, um, different ENB variables, and that looks like these. Whatever. You can get all of these from the settings panel in Digital Ocean Spaces. Like when you go onto here, and then you go settings, you can probably find all of these things here. So um, endpoint will be there. Um, Bucket is the bucket name, region will be part of the endpoint here, it's just another copy and paste. It's like a configuration thing for the client, um, I don't know, configuration thing. When I set this up initially for my blog, this was the recipe that worked, so I'm sticking with this configuration now because it is spaces. But yeah, separate driver. And then what I would do is that where you use this, let me show you in the docs here, digging deeper, file storage. Um, here. You would say storage, disk, and then the name of the disk. So here I would say spaces for for putting to that. Um, yes. It also means that I need to install some of these drivers. So I actually remembered what that project was. Let me go there to look at its dependencies. It's my blog. Congratulations! This does S3 uploads. Oh, I need to patch this. Okay, but this has some fly system drivers. This specifically. What was the other one that they said? Oh no, just for SFTP. So I need to install this. Composer require that baby. Baby. Um, apparently fly system 2 is in public preview. So that's pretty cool. Uh, by the way, when I was looking for the key and secret to be able to connect to this from a client, I had to go to API and make a new key and secret pair. Um, yeah, which I did. So it's just it's just a set of tokens, and then they don't um, for for the spaces thing, um, and then they don't repeat the secret. So if you lose that secret or you don't write it down or copy it to where it needs to go, you're gonna have to make a new key. Okay, this should be the config now. I also edited ENB, but I'm not gonna open that now to prove it. Um, this should be the config that I require to store the file. So. Upload files, this is where I store that file to S3. And I will go and check, once I've uploaded a file, I will go and check. Because of this approach of saving or sending around, passing around the UID from this point onward in the wizard, we have this issue where people might upload big files or, or files in general and then not follow through on creating the page. And so what we need to do is expire in progress pages after like a week and all the files associated with them and probably have some kind of uh, scheduled task that goes through all the files in this folder and checks are they connected to an existing page if not have they been there for seven days or longer if they have delete them so there's a chance that someone might have files deleted on an uncreated page, something that they're just busy configuring. They go away for a few days, they come back, maybe that file is deleted. Sucks to be them, but we can have warnings everywhere to say, hey, looks like this is old, maybe images are broken, you might have to recreate the page, something like that. Or maybe we just up that limit to like two weeks or something. What we want to prevent is people uploading files and linking directly to them in ways that we can't track. Now we can track, um, we can track if the files exist on a sales page and they're getting a lot of traffic. We can probably track and limit that if we find that that's the case and it's probably going to get abused at some point and we're probably going to have to cross this bridge when we get to it. But we certainly don't want to expose files for pages that haven't been formalized for very long because firstly we don't want to expose those files anyway because the page hasn't been made and secondly um, we're just wasting disk space and bandwidth at that point come on finish up um what am i doing in my blog oh, i closed that page what am i doing in my blog to save these files uh my blog cms is working with livewire which means um that I'm getting the file data on the client, passing it to the server exactly like I'm doing for the skit store v2. So here, 
I um I do this. This is this is all this is it. Okay. So let me take that and put that there. Okay. So I get the UUID over here, and then I get the data. I'll need to check that this is still good. I also get the extension, so I can make the new file with the appropriate extension, pass the raw data, make it public access. That looks good. This actually might work largely unmodified. Let's do that. And then let's just test it. Upload a file. Check if that file is visible. That seems sensible to me. Oh, it finally uploaded. Would you believe it? Okay. So let's flush this session. And then let's upload a file and see what happens. Donations. Taking a bit longer. Error. Put object. No alternate certificate name matches target host get store uploads. Oh, that's interesting. So that what? What? Might have something to do with the... Um, might have something to do with the... Prefix and bucket name. Maybe I'm duplicating something that doesn't need to be duplicated. Let me just drag over here and change END files quickly. Oh! I didn't... I also didn't restart this. So endpoint is actually this without the bucket name. So let me do that quickly and then let me restart Artisan for the env variables. Close that, bring this back here. Okay. Let's do some flushing baby. Schedule. So, I got that endpoint name wrong then. But let me have a look at these settings, because I said it was all visible in settings, and then I completely ignored that. What is the endpoint here? So that's not the full endpoint, right? restart the server and try again. I'm just going to keep the editor on, on the other screen until these settings are resolved. It's not like you need to see it permanently. I'm just changing URLs. When I know it works, I will... Um, oh, when I know it works, I'll tell you. That appeared to work. Files. Well, I'll be. That worked! Yatta! Very cool. Very cool. Okay. Let me close ENV here and then talk to you about what I did. So, this says that the endpoint is AMS3, and that's where I created the bucket. But what this doesn't append is the HTTPS. When you use that client, Fly System 1 in Laravel, it says it needs to be a fully, uh, like a full URL. So it needs HTTPS colon slash slash prepended to this endpoint that they give you. You also do not include the bucket name in this endpoint, like I had configured for assertchrist.io. So I have no idea how assertchrist.io is uploading files, but okay. Just HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash this endpoint. 
and then the bucket name as the spaces bucket variable like we have here Boop. you do repeat the region though so the endpoint includes the region name but then you do also put the region in oh i dropped frames again hello internet come back come back to me my internet okay you know what i think is happening is that tons of people in south africa are now stuck at home on the internet so delivery might suffer a little bit i hope it's not too much of an inconvenience for you dear viewer oh what did i just do i didn't want to do that why did it do that okay what i need to figure out is that this Um, so the name comes from the file name, and it gets changed. Uh, on remove file. You see, what I don't have here is the extension. I should probably pass the extension around. Because when it comes to this, I need the UUID and the extension. I basically need the file name that it's been uploaded as to remove it. Because then I call this stuff. Um, what is the file system function to remove files? Deleting files. Delete. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. And it's just a file name, right? So I can remove that stuff. But now, I need to have UUID and extension. So where do I do on remove file? On, on remove. Because have a look here. In this upload files view, right? This is what I do. Maybe I do this and then this is exactly what I do. Extension, let's flush this. Okay. So, um, now we have this file lurking here, <laughs> which <laughs> I need to delete this file. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. I feel like some kind of superpowered genius, even though I'm just using everyone else's code. Doesn't really make me, um, doesn't really make me good or anything, but feels like it okay file uploads let's upload let's upload this thing upload refresh this and we should see our file with the corresponding UUID I don't know yes okay we see that there and this I don't know what image I dragged here is it a screenshot maybe it's the same one again okay so now if I do remove here It'll take a moment because it's making that call to AWS and it should be removed from here. Very cool. That was it. That was our file upload stuff. Now we need to save a database record of this, but we save it all the way at the end when we create the page. So that's the one thing I think, um, I think that's the thing that's a big thing. So I'm going to commit that. Spaces, S3 stuff is done. A bunch of dependencies installed. Ooh, I have an extra space there. <laughs> an extra space in the spaces configuration. Um, yeah, we changed that endpoint, didn't we? Oh yeah, we removed that meta that was on the right. And then we set the extension with the UID. Good. Very good. <laughs> this is music from Hearthstone ODST. Someone just played a legendary. Okay, so we've got our file uploads. Um, so we are one step closer to making all this junk. It means that when we get to this point, we've got a name, uh, a title, so like the ideal file name, a name, 
a type we can get extension from title maybe we should have like a little extension thing in here right yeah let's have a little extension thing in here um, and then we don't need to infer it from the title because maybe we don't show it on the title maybe like we do like a icon thing we get strip the extension off whatever who cares I don't know do we want to do that though I actually prefer saving as little extraneous data as possible. I'm actually just going to leave it like that for now. Okay. Fine. So, what happens when we get to the end of this workflow? All of these have steps. Show confirmation actually comes out completely. So I can get rid of all mention of show confirmation because theme has now become the last step. Whee. Ooh, share code is so small. Hmm, what a small workflow. Okay, show confirmation can get lost so we get rid of that component we get rid of that view um, show wizard now changes because there's a step that comes out of this Oop. and let's just check the wizard quickly because this contains a lot of logic oh I need to refactor this hey I hate this get patch for put patch for nonsense I did last month I hate it but I think we are, um, I think we are in a good spot. If we do select theme, and um, I wonder if I already set what I was planning to set up now again. If next, show next. Else, DD. Make this stuff. I wonder if that'll work. Next, next, PayPal. Garbage. Next. Theme, whatever. Next. Make the stuff. Make the stuff. Seems about right. So uh, now we. Oof, screen's flickering. Oh, let's get rid of, let's empty my trash can. Let's put notifications off. Uh, delay all the things. Delay all the things. Okay. Let's make that an early exit because else's are hardly ever necessary. But maybe what we do here is this, um, create. Now, oh, on confirm, actually. That's exactly what that method was. Okay, now actually this is gonna lead to a lot of mess because I'm gonna do a lot of crap in here. And probably a good way to refactor this is out with events and listeners but since that stuff is synchronous or needs to be synchronous for this anyway I'm just gonna do it here and then I will think about how I refactor it nicely later um, while I'm while I've got this on my mind I'll probably want to rename these theme and currency to like sushi theme and sushi currency or static or fixed or whatever because this thinking about it now this has like the implication I, I wanted to also put plans into a sushi model um, and workflows or like some of their stuff into sushi models but then I get into naming conflicts with like the actual dynamic plans so yeah, I want to maybe rename these just to make it a little bit clearer that they are not um, not mutable that they are immutable <laughs> okay so similarly make all the things that's what fires off here 
So we need to make page, make plans, um, make repositories, make uploads, um, redirect. Those are the steps we need to do here. So, um, we need models for these as well. Of course, of course we need models for these. Oh, we're brushing up against an hour. I'm gonna finish this model work though. Oh, page, repository, upload. That's them. Now, as I did previously, I want to put these into their own folder because I, I like that scheme, which means I need to suffix the namespace. So let me do that quickly, and then I need to do fillable properties for them, um, which I, oh, I didn't do with that because that's a sushi model, of course. So I'll just do this as a template, and then I will fetch their fields in just a second. that no oh, when you pay, when you copy instead of paste what a noob move okay fillable um, let's pull their fields oh we don't full ID let's pull their fields so page does this Oh, the extra court kills me. That felt so good, and then that happened. Plan. Tell you what I'll do. That. That. Quotes. Move. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. You're killing me. Fat fingers. Come on. <sighs> okay. The next. This one will be perfect. This one will be perfect. My second last chance to impress the keyboard nerds in chat. Oh, I'm not going to be able to do it with this one because <laughs> I can. Okay. Back, quote, end, comma. Yes. And I use a mouse. Can't get better than that. Oh, no, that one, that, quote, end, comma. Love it, love it. Um, this, look, this is a slightly more work than just saying, God, it is an empty array. Oh, net drop. Let me sip some coffee while this recovers. So this is actually slightly more effort than doing guarded as an empty array. But I hate guarded as an empty array because that poops on the idea of what the security measure is for. I would rather allow list everything that should be settable through fillable. And later when I add fields, it's going to frustrate me and I'll waste 15 minutes trying to track down why the field's not... Oh, there goes the net again. Coffee. Later I'll add a field. And it will frustrate me because I'll spend 15 minutes trying to track down why the fields are not updating. But you know what? At least people won't be able to change what they're not supposed to change. Allow lists are good. Do allow lists. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's totally like... I didn't even think of it from that point of view, but yeah, absolutely. Um, it's good It's good to have an overview of what's in, of what's in there without going to the migrations as well. And it's like, it's a snapshot, right? So like, um, the migrations will give you like events and you may have to go through multiple migrations to track what 
what the state of it is, whereas this will just tell you a snapshot of the latest state. Cool. Okay. So we've got these models in here. We need to say page is new pay. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> page create, my friends. Page create. Okay. Again, we can reuse some of this work over here. So I am not going to set these by default. In fact, I'm not going to set any of this mess by default, but I will say this is auth user ID. I will do that. In fact, I could probably say auth user and it'll cast, but it's fine. Auth user ID. Okay, that takes care of that. Now I need to do all the plans. So how do I do that? Probably go into here. Get the plans. And then I need to go and look in customize plans for patch. Okay. Just 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 to refresh my memory. For each plans as plan. Patch is get patch for plan. And then I can do plan is plan create. I probably don't need to save this to a variable because I can just link the page ID directly in there. But let me do it to begin with anyway. Okay. Now this is tricky because all of these should could potentially be overwritten by the patch. And I don't want to do that logic here. I mean, I, I want to do the patch logic here, but I don't want to do the picking which ones can be overridden. So for now, I'm just going to assume they can all be overridden. I'll say this is page ID, which means I can not have to save that. But then here I will have to say uh, not empty, I think is the logic, the pattern that I was doing for this patch title, then use the patch title, else use the plan title. Again, it annoys me I have to use array access for some of these things and object access for others. What are you going to do? Okay, it can actually all follow this, uh, all follow this pattern. So let's do by commas, and then do that, and then copy. Oof, I need a shortcut for this. Oof. Oh, I can't do this because our dev server is not on 74. It's verbose code for us, boys and, and girls, if girls are watching, but girls probably have more sense than to watch a coding stream on a Tuesday night. What am I even saying? I think that's good enough. That's what I'm saying. I think that's good enough. Okay. So we're making clans. Um, repos takes selected repositories? No. The patch has this, right? Oh! The patch has the repos in it. Right? Helpers. Get patch fall. Ah! Okay. Tell you what, let's put this mess in here, so I remember, because this would have broken. Oh, I need a helper function even more for this. <sighs> Look at this garbage. Now that I've done all of this copy and paste, I'm going to do my helper method. I should be able to say 
with and patch title. Hey! Much better, hey? Oh, this Hearthstone music is a jam. Okay. Cool. So that takes over the setting stuff. Um, we also need to do... Uh, so you create a plan and then you attach the repositories to this plan for each with plan patch so, uh, no, come now. No, you don't really do that. You do <laughs> um, patch selected repos repositories as repository. Yay! Now, I am going to comment out this, and I'm going to comment out this. Because I want to see what's here again. Just remind myself again. So I should be able to just click on this and it will tell me. So what, um, say what? Oh. Ooh, net drop. I might have a coffee every time the net drops. Give me my data! What are you doing? Why won't you tell me what it is? What? Selected GitHub repositories as repository. <laughs> you want to know why? I'll tell you why, chat. It is because I haven't selected any GitHub repositories. Huh? You don't select GitHub repositories, you have nothing to die and dump. I think, though, that I changed all of their URLs to work with the live demo site. So I'm going to have to change all of those things again. Oh, what a pain. And this is logged in with work stuff, so I have to change accounts here. Cool, hey? Let me just log in with everything everywhere quickly. I'm so sorry for this delay. Developer settings. So in GitHub you go developer settings, profile, developer settings, OAuth apps, and then you can change um, the URL there. It's actually pretty easy to do. 27001, 8000, and I need to repeat that down here. So I changed the URL four times for GitHub because I have two separate apps for that. One for just login and one for, okay, let us do menacing stuff in your account. And I have another one. Oh, come on. That account doesn't have the password saved to it. Of course it doesn't. I have another two apps to do in Bitbucket. It's quite annoying because in if you do like say you do GitHub, uh, not GitHub. Say you do Git uh, Google OAuth, you can set multiple redirect URLs um, for those apps, but you can't do it for GitHub and Bitbucket. They only let you do the one, which is bit of a pain actually because then I have to go through this rigmarole this is why I did um, it's like one of the reasons I had to oh no don't do that change it's one of the reasons I had to do um, ngrok for v1 is because like I need an external URL from these things and SSL and all this junk the setup's a little bit easier for v2 but the moment I go to um, embed checkout I'm gonna have exactly the same problem again for testing purposes. So I think that's it. I should be able to connect now again. 
So let's go back and let's add a thing or two. <laughs> Sorry for the wait. Thank you for all the new folks that have popped in to say hi. I'm working on a thing called Git Store. It's a way to sell code and generally digital stuff that doesn't entirely suck. Cool. Let's add a couple repos. Um, we might need to reauthor Footbucket because their tokens expire ridiculously quickly. This is actually going to be a problem for me because when someone commits, it might be days after they last did Bitbucket. So I may have to see, do they have Bitbucket repos? Okay, cool, we'll just click here quickly to reauth because Bitbucket might have forgotten who you were in the two days that you weren't here. Oh, another coffee because net drop. Uh, so unstable. At least it's not completely dying. I have hope that I won't have to like stitch together seven parts. Okay, sync. Whee! Okay, so we got two things there. Let's do a couple file uploads as well. Yes? Where are my remove links? Great. Um, okay, so now when I pick the theme and go build your page, there we go, that's what I have for the repo. So, okay. Uh, repository create. What are the fields we need here? Repositories. Oh, no. Let's go to the model. Yes, very good. Oh, I'm going to have all the data I need here. This is beautiful. Um, okay. The name is repository name. The source is GitHub for the GitHub repos. And the page ID is this. Beautiful. If you're new in chat, say how's it. There's lots of other people who are nerding out about some dude writing code in Laravel and Livewire. You probably share interests with them. It's a hangout. It's a fun time. I insist. Really, I insist. <laughs> Creepy. Okay. And then finally, we go through the uploads. And we create those. So I'm going to uh, once again do my little investigation. DD, and this will be uh, upload. Cool. Also, if you're new, maybe say what your language is um, spoken and also programming. And uh, yeah, where you're from. That'll be cool. I don't get people talking in chat. Okay, I have the name, the type, the size, the UUID, and the extension. This is beautiful. It's everything I need. So, upload, create. What are my model fields? So that is awkwardly named name. Might want to refactor that. Upload UID. Type is upload type. And size is upload. Would you believe it? Size. This should, in theory, create a page for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to redirect to a different page. For now, I'll just make it as, um, I don't know, like, <sighs> think, where is my routes folder? There is my routes folder. I will find it. Oh, damn it, I don't have a page for this. Um, look, what I need to do is definitely um, 
blank out these things, right? I don't want to flush entirely because flushing will remove my auth as well. But I need a way of flushing just the... I actually need to change this to not do session flush, but to do a um, session forget of the individual things. Because I don't want it to nuke the auth session, I want them to stay logged in. And I do want them to redirect, but when I have the page, like, add a URL, right? So, deleting data, forget, and you can do multiple keys with this, which is perfect. Okay, in which case I need to do some multi-cursor foo, like that. that and like that and that and that and all of that and some of that and then that welcome to the ASMR stream okay so flush do that and then I can just call on flush <laughs> the ASMR dev and now I'm going to change the session so that they don't resubmit the same page multiple times Listen to me click the button. <laughs> it's great. Come on. It's great. Okay. Now when I do this, my session should flash. Oh, no. <laughs> what did I call this in the workflow? Because now my database is messed with data. <sighs> name! I called it name! Of course I did! I called it name! <sighs> now I have to truncate database tables. It's fine. It's all fine. We're going over time, but it is fine. Everyone's happy. Everyone better be happy. Okay. I should have a couple files in S3 now though, right? Because I did upload some files. I should have at least two in there. Yes, at least two is accurate. I have exactly two. And these are some uh, donate and schedule, schedule, or schedule, if you are from a part of the world that says schedule. Okay. More debugging. Is maintained is undefined. Okay. Let's put is maintained, um, that stuff in here. Is maintained false. Is supported also false. That, 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 and that. I'm just looking if there are any of these that have, probably, probably some of them are going to get these flags turned on and have corresponding UI enabled. Um, and then this, um, this never gets... Yeah, we should actually skip over these if upsell is true. Upsell. Oh, crumbs. I've just done the naughty. This is... Caps. Uh, camel case. Can you feel the pain of mundane, repetitive changes? You must feel the pain, because we don't have default values. I bet you were shouting into 
your screen as well. Make it gobble case, not Python case, you disgusting individual! Is is map ordered? Great. <laughs> okay, continue. So, a uh, bit of a thing because upsell is always in the in the plans thing, but um, we obviously don't want to make an upsell plan for people because that's just a placeholder for like pro features. Okay, let's try again. Undefined in in, in insects is upsell. Did I like not save these? Oh, uh, oh no no no! I know what this is. I need to flush. Bit of a pain because now I have to do all those things again. Oh, you know what it didn't do in this new flush method? Um, is I didn't flush the step, the show. back. Yay, it remembered these in the sessions because it's fantastic! Oh, that's great! Okay, give me my remove buttons. My remove buttons. PayPal garbage. Next. Make it so. Undefined variable page. You lying sack of... Oh. What? Oh, <laughs> clear the session. Of course it's going to clear the session, Chris. That's exactly what you made it do. I saw red, so I'm drinking the coffee. <sighs> and will it work now? What are the bets? Put bets in chat. Will it work now? I'm going to say no. Okay, one page, uh, multiple pages. Okay, you know what I'm going to do because um, potentially, potentially shenanigans. I'm going to go through that process again quickly. Um, because of the previous error, I didn't clear after that. I hope that's the reason. I hope. <laughs> Pages, pages first, pages. Okay. None of that default content, which is fine. For user one, that's me. Plans. Yes. Associated with a page. Four repos. <laughs> GitHub's repeated. Damn it. <sighs> okay. But the selected repos. Yes. Uploads. Two files. Donations and schedule. Yes. Right? Right? Okay. What do we do with URLs? Numeric URLs suck. And they are guessable in sequence. So if someone has published something that they don't want to share, we may have a problem and crawling this for content would definitely be a problem. So what do we do? PHP generate nice random name. Damn it. Nice random server name. New server name. I'm sure I saw a PHP library that will do this. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure. In fact, you know, I'm using something like this for a username generator. No, not get store, get hub. I'm using something like this for a username generator for get store one. So I think that will be in observers for user. Oh, that's a popular package. When last did it update? A very long time ago. <sighs> yes. Love it. Love it! Let me use this again. This does mean that we need to change the pages migration to include a slug. S slug? Slug. And then we'll need to artisan migrate fresh. And then we will need to flush reauth. We'll probably drop our auth session. Ah, oh, well. I have dropped approximately. 3.8% of frames. That is terrible. I hope it's not been buffering too much for you tonight. Wow, look at me. Hour and a half stream. Look, the streams aren't usually an hour and a half. I am just gripped. I'm just gripped by this work. So there we go. As soon as I have this generating a slug and have a live wire show page component rendering like the slug in the title, I'm a bounce. So you're in for like another 10 or 15 minutes of work. But thank you for sticking around for longer than usual. I do appreciate it. And the chat, especially you, Sam. Especially you. Uh, come on then. Oh, watching something installed must be the most boring thing in the world. Did I nullable it? I nullable it. I nullable it so much. Let's uh, put this in here. And then token length. Perfect. That thing just went red again. I keep on dropping frames. Mm. That token length needs single quotes, yo. Installed. Migrated. Um, we need to refresh our stuff here. So. Oh, the auth me. remember the lists though that's perfect and that's so good that's the kind of UI that you would expect I love it I remember the PayPal stuff as well perfect okay so now I should actually have multiple pages in here but I don't have any Oh, <laughs> you know how I was talking about earlier? All that time I'd be wasting. Perfect. Do 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 do.
Damn it. I don't have the slug there. What's up with that? Page slug. Show wizard. Plan slug. Come on, you're killing me. Actually killing me. Good thing this is so quick because everything is just remembered. Most things are remembered. One or two things are remembered. Okay. Pages. Yes! Gentle Sky! Gentle Sky! That's great! Okay. Um. Oof. Whatever. Put that there, and then let's run artisan, make, m make, live wire, show page, show wizard, preview theme, show page. Good. Love it. We need to load this in a route that has a slug at the end of it. So. Um... Me? I think it's gonna work. I do think it's gonna work. Um, HTTP controllers, show page, oh, dot pep. And we'll do the same thing that's here. And we can get rid of these stupid headers because turns out that wasn't the problem at the time. I was debugging this for something else completely unrelated. It's all fine. <sighs> page. This loads a page object, which means we need to use app. Yay! Totally not using an IDE for obvious reasons. And then our live wire components, which we have now, um, we actually need a view in here, which is show page. Oh, flip, I got confused there. I was like, where is this thing? Okay, and this loads in page. Using a slightly older version of Livewire, this doesn't need to be in brackets for now. Okay, and then our show page thingy. H1, H1, page title. Very good. Will it work? Who knows? Public function mount, page, page, this page. it work? Gentle Sky, was it? Damn it all to hell! Why? Tell me that that scoped, sli that scoped URL parameter is not just in 7. I would really cry tears if that scoped parameter thing was just in 7. Required parameters, ID, post, optional, regex, global nonsense, named routes. No! No! Where is the... Okay, binding, customizing the key. Post slug, that's exactly what I'm doing! Oh. But it's going to tell me that only landed in 7. Right model binding. Oh. Damn it. Okay, so what I was trying to do was use a new feature of Laravel 7, which lets you create route bindings like, like this, right? But in Laravel 7, you can actually say what column it is that this applies to, and it works that stuff out, which is phenomenal. Only it's not working for me. There we go. Very good.
Very good. I have a problem in my controller. Oh, and this is not a dot blade dot PHP, of course. Uh, page model is not used in. Yep. Love this debugging nonsense. Oh, and there. Show page, 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 title. Show page components. Page, 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 page. Weird. Is it this nonsense? No. H1. Uh, oh, I don't have a title in there yet. <laughs> okay, look. We're loading the data in, we've successfully created the page, which means all the database structures, file uploads, we've done a ton of stuff tonight, but we're also 40 minutes longer than what we usually are. So I'm gonna say, git add, git commit, scaffold, show page component, and that is where I'm gonna call it for tonight. Thank you so much for being here for so long, there's more people than usual, and for being in chat, um, mostly Sam, for being in chat, everyone else you are very quiet, unless my chat is just broken. Um, I'm going to be here tomorrow night again, like the rest of the world I am in quarantine at the moment, which means more time to stream, less time to be out doing other nonsense. So internet permitting, I will be here tomorrow night to stream more Git Store Magic. Um, probably putting some of this dynamic content on the page, uh, page, <laughs> page live wire component, and bringing through some some theming stuff and some inline editing. There's lots of really cool stuff to go. But this was good. I really think this was very productive. So thank you for joining me with that. And with that, I bid you adieu.